OK, so this is the first unit on the strand of files in the FIS2320 Computing 2 uh, video tutorials. Um, if you're a lead student, you'll be able to download the Jupyter Notebook, which was used to make these slides, uh, as well as the PDF file from Minerva. OK, so we're going to start with a um, brief introduction to um, files in Python. So it kind of seems probably fairly obvious that a um, file is a collection of information that you expect to be stored on the computer's disk or possibly on a web server or uh, something similar that you can read. And if you've got the permissions to, you can write uh, information to. But actually from the Python point of view, a file is a variable that has a particular type, which rather unsurprisingly is called a file. Um, so a file variable is a variable that uh, knows how to do certain things like reading and writing. Um, so it's got particular methods and it understands certain um, properties of, of the of, of files, like whether it is open or closed. And then in the background, what Python is doing is it's connecting that variable of type file to an actual data file that's on the disk. So when you um, try and use the um, read or the write uh, methods with that file variable, it's going to go and actually do something to the file on the disk, which is what you'd expect. Um, so Python lets you do some basic fairly low level operations with um, these file type variables. Um, and we're gonna show you how to use those uh, in this unit. Um, but actually for dealing with um, kind of real file formats, more complicated file formats, we would normally end up with some other sort of libraries that use the file variables and build upon them in order to give you a much easier way of, of accessing the data that's in the file and doing some of the legwork for you. Uh, so we'll come and look at the use of some of those libraries in future units of this strand. So, um, before we actually get working with trying to write a, a program to read a file in uh, or to work with a file, it's generally a good idea to go and have a look at what's actually in a typical example of the file you're trying to read. So it's a good idea to go and open it in some kind of uh, uh, program like an editor or something like that. So a word of warning, things like Excel or Origin or indeed Word all do quite a lot of processing with the files when they read them in, in order to make them display nicely in, in their program. And, and obviously that's what you want. If you're trying to open a spreadsheet, you want to be able to have all the numbers go into the right cells correctly. If you're opening a file in origin, you want it to open with the, the, the worksheet in nice, nicely set out in columns. And if you load it up in Word, you'd like your text to be formatted. But actually that kind of processing is getting in the way of being able to see what was actually really inside the file. And so what you want to do is you want to open up into a, a much simpler program, a simple editor. Um, so for example, Notepad++ on Windows is a common one, or the text edit um, app on the Mac is quite good. But equally easily, you can just use the spider editor. That's a basic text editor. Um, and they're much better at going and interpreting uh, what's going on inside a file. So when you open a file in, in one of these text editors, you want to go and sort of work your way through a series of checks to make sure you understand what's there. So the very first thing you want to do is say, well, is this actually readable at all? So if it's a binary file, it's just going to look like a horrible mess um, in the um, in, when you open the text file with all kinds of unprintable characters and, um, and non-alphanumeric characters there. So if it's a binary file, then um, it's probably not worth uh, going on very much further with. Um, but assuming it's a text file, then you want to see um, how's the data inside that file uh, laid out. So uh, if, for example, it was just a, um, a text file of um, some uh, of a story of some English prose, then you would expect just to have lines with numbers of words and punctuation marks and maybe the occasional um, uh, chapter heading or section heading or something like that. But basically it would just be um, a, an irregular number of words on each line and a series of lines. But of course, in physics, we're generally more used to dealing with um, data files that contain numerical data, um, or at least organized data, what you might think of as say structured data. Um, in other words, something you can write down in a table. And so you look to see whether your file has obvious columns and a regular number of columns on each line that 
would seem to suggest that you can describe this, this, uh, the contents of this file as a, as a table of some sort. Um, and then what you want to do is say, well, if it does, is there some obvious character which is separating the columns out? So that might be a comma or it might be a tab. Uh, alternatively, sometimes what you see is that the, the columns are assumed to be of a fixed width. And so the, the spacing is done by padding out with space characters to make the next bit of data line up underneath the previous bit of data. Um, you might also see in quite a lot of file formats that you have um, some information in the file that's telling you about the data that's in the file. So data about data is called metadata. Um, and it might be telling you, um, for example, if it was a, a, a data file containing uh, information from a measurement, it might be telling you about the sample or the conditions under which the, the data was measured or something about the instruments that were used to make the measurements. Um, and that might all be information that you're also interested in, in looking at as well. Um, and so um, in a later unit, we'll come to looking at ways in which uh, you might go and uh, deal with a file with metadata in it. If the file just has numerical data, then you want to be thinking, well, what formats that numerical data in? Is it floating point? Is it integer? Is it scientific? Is it a mixture of all of those? Uh, what, what's in there? How do you take the, the, the textual representation of those numbers and turn them into numbers within Python, turn them into floats or ints or whatever? And the other thing to watch out for is, is the file um, actually just using the Latin alphabet? In other words, is it using A to Z? number zero to nine, or does it have something else, say Japanese, Chinese, or Cyrillic um, characters in there? Um, those can still be considered as text files. Um, uh, it's just they're not uh, in um, uh, the Latin alphabet, and so you need to be able to go and learn how to deal with those if that becomes a problem. Um, that's probably a, a topic that's a bit beyond the scope of this course, um, but uh, it's a thing that you know, we sort of see in real world applications. So I thought I'd just show some examples of some of the data files that happen to be sitting on my, the hard disk of my computer. Um, so this is uh, what we get out of a lot of our measurement rigs in the condensed matter group. Um, so you can see that there's um, uh, uh, looks like a fixed number of columns, uh, of, mainly of numbers, with the first row being some column headers. Um, the only thing is that the start of the line has some stuff which doesn't look like numerical data. Um, and if one explores the file carefully, then you find out that the uh, columns are all separated with tab characters. And in fact, the first column is not numbers, it's, it's um, more complicated, it's actually the, the metadata of the experiment. The first row, as I say, is the column headers, and then the rest of the file is, is, is numbers, is numerical data. Um, this is another example. This comes from the diamond light source. Um, and here we have a kind of header of metadata, of, of lines of data about the experiment. And after that, um, the, the numerical data, again, is in a tabular format, but here it's uh, being spaced by uh, putting in a fixed number of space characters um, to make all the numbers line up um, one after each other in the, in the file. Um, so that, again, is a slightly different way of arranging the data. Um, this third example comes from one of the instruments in our lab. Um, and again, you've got a, a, a header of information. Um, and then in fact, you have a huge number of columns in this file um, and every column is separated with a comma. Uh, and then you get the, the numbers. And again, you have numbers that go with every single column and those numbers are separated by commas. Um, and so every file has its own subtleties in the way in which it's organized. Um, and a lot of the problem you get when you're um, dealing with reading data in is to understand exactly what the type of file is. So the first thing you want to be doing is um, looking at the file in a text editor to try and understand what's there and how you might read it. 